What were they on when they thought of these? Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest horror movie plots. But I'm the ice cream man. I make children happy. That means we're looking at horror movies that have ridiculous, nonsensical, or just downright hilarious stories. Also probably, but a spoiler alert should be in effect. All right, let's get to it. Number 10, Countdown. Countdown is sort of like the ring for a new generation. Only the ring was good. Instead of a cursed VHS tape, it's a phone app. And when you download it, it tells you when you're gonna die. I got 63 years. 57 years. Before you die, would you want to know? When the heroine downloads the app, she realizes, much to her horror, that she only has, wait for it, three days to live. She then has to figure out how to stop her imminent demise. Countdown app, it's really just a random number with a clock. It's not that scary, but it seems like it worked on YouTube clowns. So how exactly does this lethal phone app work? Is the story a paper-thin commentary on how we rely on technology to dictate our lives? Whatever. It's lame, it's ridiculous, and it's a blatant ripoff of a better and scarier movie. Number 9. Maximum Overdrive This movie was released just two months before it hit bookshelves, which is easily one of King's most bonkers stories. The 80s were a wild time for Mr. King. Maximum Overdrive was directed by King himself and is based on one of his short stories. <laughs> In this one, a comet passes by Earth and causes all the machines to come alive and pursue humans. Kermit! It's coming after us! The protagonists have to do battle with monstrous trucks. Do you think any illegal substances were involved? Granted, the movie isn't entirely based in horror, as it contains a lot of black humor and intentionally campy elements. Bill, where's my dad? Well, Dunn got scrubbed by one of them big boys out there. Tough break, kid. That said, we can't just ignore how ludicrous the whole thing is. Number 8. Bunny Man You really can't go wrong with the traditional maniac chases a bunch of stupid teenagers story. That is, unless you dress the maniac in a bunny suit. It's like you guys had a little bit of trouble. <laughs> yep, that's one way to put it. Yes, the amazingly named Bunny Man concerns the titular Bunny Man, a psychopath who pursues people with a chainsaw while dressed like a bunny. Surprisingly, this movie is actually influenced by a real Virginia urban legend. It's said that a man dressed in a rabbit suit threatened some people with either an axe or a hatchet in Fairfax County back in 1970. The Washington Post even reported that the alleged bunny man ate a person's cat. Urban legend aside, we find a bunny villain difficult to take seriously in a movie. Judging by your reaction, you're a little bit worried that we might hurt you. Honestly, we probably will. Number 7. Manos, The Hands of Fate <laughs> This film is the result of an insurance salesman betting his screenwriter friend that he could make a horror movie. He certainly did, and the result is one of the worst movies ever produced. Where did this place come from? It wasn't here a few minutes ago. It starts with a family getting lost in the Texas desert on their first vacation. They then come across a mysterious house run by a satyr. Thou hast taught us, O Manos, and we have listened. Give ear to our words, O Manos, and hear us. Hear us. Hear us. The satyr works for the Master, a mysterious cult leader who keeps numerous wives and worships a deity named Manos. It sounds like an intentionally corny B-movie, and it certainly has its charms. However, everyone knew they were making utter crap, and creator Harold P. Warren admitted it was the worst movie ever made. <laughs> Number 6. Grabbers Grabbers is actually a pretty decent movie, a respectable byproduct of Shaun of the Dead's influence on the horror comedy genre. It follows the inhabitants of an island off the coast of Ireland that's invaded by sea aliens. However, the citizens soon learn that the aliens can't stomach high blood alcohol content, so they decide to hunker down and get hammered. So how drunk are we talking here? Paddy levels of drunkenness. <laughs> You're going off your game, boy. It sounds like a straight up comedy, but it also contains a fair share of excitement and surprisingly scary scenes. And it does take itself as seriously as its premise will allow, which, you know, isn't very serious. We need more alcohol! <laughs> Number 5. Ice Cream Man. First off, let's just address that title. It may be the worst movie title in history, and that is saying something. Hey, what's your problem, mister? You didn't 
say please. The movie follows a mentally ill man named Gregory Tudor who witnessed the murder of an ice cream man as a child, causing Gregory to correlate the crime with ice cream or something. You little turds are gonna have to learn you can't run from the ice cream man. I know where you live. Once he's released from a mental institution, Gregory begins working as an ice cream man and uses the corpses of the people and animals he takes out in his recipes. Come on, this isn't a parking lot. Hey, ice cream man. Ah! This is not a hunk of junk. It's like Sweeney Todd, only with ice cream instead of meat pies. It doesn't make a lick of sense, but what exactly did you expect from a movie called Ice Cream Man? Number four, The Ginger Dead Man. Nope, we didn't spell or say that incorrectly. There actually exists a movie called The Ginger Dead Man, and it is every bit the fever dream you probably imagine. What happened? What was this uh, man? A gingerbread man? Bizarrely enough, the film stars a typically zany Gary Busey as the titular Ginger Dead Man, which is a ridiculous imitation of Chucky. Not that Chucky isn't ridiculous as well. Come over here. I want it. I want it. Kick your ass. The Ginger Dead Man consists of a typical gingerbread man and the ashes, yes, the ashes of a criminal who was given the chair, resulting in a deranged gingerbread man who hangs around a bakery. This is like something your stoned friend would come up with while watching Child's Play on Christmas. Only they actually made it into a movie. Now it's time to meet your maker. Prepare to face the butcher baker. For tonight, your ass is toast. Number three, Leprechaun 4 in space. You know, we were fine with an evil leprechaun. We were fine with the leprechaun in Vegas, but we draw the line at space. Like most movie series fresh out of ideas, the leprechaun franchise took to space in 1997. It takes place in 2096, sees the leprechaun courting an alien princess named Zarina, and even features lightsabers. Leprechaun also hunts space marines and cyborgs on a spaceship after emerging from a soldier's penis. Let that be a lesson to you, lad. Always wear a prophylactic. Oh, we forgot to tell you. The Leprechaun's spirit traveled up the marine's urine stream while he was peeing on the Leprechaun's corpse. Do people feel ashamed for writing this kind of stuff? After this, sending the Leprechaun to the hood actually started to sound practical by comparison. I want a throne. I want to be king. I want people groveling at me. Number two, Jack Frost. No, we're not talking about the heartwarming but somewhat goofy kids movie that saw Michael Keaton transformed into a snowman. We're talking about 1997's Jack Frost, a straight to video disaster. Granted, we would forgive you for being mistaken as the plot follows a similar outline. This thing is able to latently alter its elemental molecular structure. English stone, English. It can freeze and unfreeze at will. Much like Child's Play and the Ginger Dead Man, Jack Frost sees a serial killer trapped inside the body of something else. Clark. World's most pissed off snow cone. This time it's a snowman, as the transport carrying Jack Frost crashes into a genetics truck, causing his body to fuse with the snow. They really will stretch the Chucky concept to its most ludicrous depths, won't they? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, deathbed, the bed that eats. What is this, some kind of joke? This movie belongs in a museum because future generations will never believe there existed a movie called Deathbed, The Bed That Eats. As you can imagine, the movie concerns a literal deathbed. But wait, it gets so much better. You see, the bed was conjured by a demon who wanted to sleep with some random hot woman. Only the woman died during copulation, causing the demon to cry blood onto the bed and inadvertently bring it to life. The blood left behind took root into the bed, and from this root a life sprang, and with this life, a hunger. Oh, and the bed trapped an artist in a painting and forces him to watch it eat its victims. This was writer-director George Barry's only film, but we cannot see why. He could have gone places with that fevered imagination of his. Do you think I thought to exist beyond you? Taking me with you unto death is not your revenge, it's my release. Now, if you guys have been paying attention, you know that I'm a huge Stephen King stan, so to put a Stephen King movie on this list is a heartbreak to me, but I think Stephen King would be the first to admit that Maximum Overdrive deserves its spot on this list. 
Either way, I'd still like to apologize. But anyway, uh, what do you guys think? What movie has the dumbest plot in terms of horror movies? Let us know in the comments or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video.